Like many towns within the Watch Valley of Switzerland, the 19th century residents in the French-speaking town of saint emir gave up agriculture in favor of more lucrative jobs in the watch industry. From its creation in 1832, to this day, the history of the Longines Watchmaking Company, or Compagnie de Montre Longines Francion S.A., has been marked by many important events, including being listed as a Swiss heritage site of national significance. In fact, the entire village of saint emir is part of the inventory of Swiss heritage sites, which is a law protecting its cultural heritage. The Longines Watchmaking Company has been around for quite a long time, and their history packs a wallop of a punch within the watchmaking industry. So without further ado, please like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, let's run the intro and get started. The Longines story began in 1832 when a local banker and Swiss watchmaker, Auguste Ocasis, partnered with Henry Ragel and Florian Morel, two lawyers. They named their company Ragel Jeune and C and sold pocket watches with crown wheel escapements. The crown wheel escapements was the earliest known type of mechanical escapement that controls its rate by allowing the gear train to advance at regular intervals or ticks. These crown wheel escapements were used up until the mid 19th century in pocket watches. The three men were doing what many others in the area were already doing and followed the same formula, open a store and sell goods. However, August had a vision and ambition for something more. He realized that if he oversaw the entire manufacturing process, he could increase production. The idea worked and very soon his watches were being worn on both sides of the Atlantic. With his connection in the American market, including family, he was able to sell his artisan watches to people enthralled with the old country. As things were starting to grow, his partners Henry and Florian retired from the watch industry, leaving August as sole company head. In 1852, August brought in his 18-year-old nephew, Ernest Francion, to help manage the growth. The decision was a good one, as Ernest was just as ambitious and is the man behind many of the brand's innovations going forward. By the 1860s, Ernest became the head of the company, as August's health began to fade. His first major decision came in 1866, when he purchased a large piece of land known as the Les Bongines, with the purpose of building a factory. With the building of this new factory, the new name for the company was born. In 1867, Ernest hired Jaco David, a talented engineer, as operations manager, a role in which he oversaw all factory equipment and mechanical systems. That same year, Ernest produced his first movement. The 20A movement had an anchor escapement as well as a pendant winding and setting mechanism, a significant upgrade over key wound pocket watches. With their new advanced production method and upgraded technology, Longines was poised to ascend. News of the advancement of American watch production was starting to make headlines. Ernest, being proactive, sent Jacquot to America's first World's Fair in Philadelphia in 1876. His mission was to gather new ideas and strategies from the Americans. The strategy worked. Jacquot returned and wrote a comprehensive 108-page report on his findings. The report detailed the inner workings of American factories, including the entire production process from raw materials to finished watches, including internal structure and quality control measures implemented from within. This report is considered one of the most significant documents in watchmaking history and put Longines at the forefront of the industry as a pioneer in mechanized production. The end result? He concluded the Swiss watchmaking industry needed to change to keep pace with their American competitors. His travels to the US influenced the Longines Watch Factory, which opened in 1867 and still operates from the original site to this day. The next accomplishment was the release of the 20H movement in 1878. This mono pusher chronograph movement featured a single pusher to start, stop, and reset the chronograph function. The brand gained exposure, building its reputation in horse racing and jumping as the movement was suitable for precise timing in professional events. Even today, the brand remains synonymous with high-profile events such as the French Open in tennis and the Kentucky Derby in thoroughbred racing. As the company grew, the brand was presented with a genuine problem. 
counterfeiters. Cheaply made watches looking to pass off as genuine Longines products. Again being proactive, Ernest made the decision to trademark the Longines name in 1880, and later the distinctive winged hourglass logo in 1889. This logo is the oldest, unchanged, yet still active registered trademark in the international registers kept by the World Intellectual Property Organization, which is impressive to say the least. To combat the counterfeiters, a decision was made that all the factory's watches would bear the Longines name on the dial. A winged hourglass is also engraved on the movements. In fact, Longines meticulously records each of its watches' serial numbers. To this day, Longines will provide a certificate of authenticity to their customers upon request. Longines released the caliber 19.73 pocket watch in 1890, an effective mechanism for sports field timers. By 1922, Longines was producing split-second chronographs which could measure time to one one-hundredth of a second. The 1900 Paris Exposition World's Fair, held between April and November of that year, was an important event for Longines as they won the Grand Prix with their La Renommée Pocket Watch 2159 caliber chronograph movement, another feather in their cap for the brand. In 1927, Longines created a series of navigational devices with the help of Philippe Van Horn Weems, a U.S. naval officer. This technology helped change the aviation industry by contributing with the help of Charles A. Lindbergh in the creation of the Lindbergh Hour Angel Watch in 1931, which helped locate a pilot's precise geographical location. By 1945, Longines rolled large-scale production of their patented 22A automatic movement with an upgraded rotor winding mechanism. The Kronos 9 launched in 1954, was another important achievement for the brand. It was a 16mm camera attached to a quartz clock, perfect for providing sports officials filmed tapes showing still images recording at 1 100th of a second. In 1971, Longines was purchased by the ASUAG, the former biggest Swiss watch industry group was looking for a luxury brand to add. The ASUAG and SIHH eventually combined, and in 1985, they formed the Société Suisse de Macroelectronique et de Horlogerie, which went on to become SMH. By 1986, Nicolas G. Hayek took the reins of the SMH and renamed it Swatch, after the popular watch brand. Everything from there, as folks say, was history. Longines is one of Swatch's major luxury brands, and with their help, the Swatch Watch Company now brings in an annual revenue of over 7 billion US dollars. In 1992, the Longines Museum opened at the company's headquarters in Saint-Imir. The museum traces the history of Longines from 1832 to present, with exhibits of pocket watches and wristwatches from various periods, chronographs, and other navigation instruments, as well as some collective advertising materials. As of present, guided tours are available and are free to the public. The most expensive Longines watch ever auctioned sold in October 2008. Albert Einstein, the famous physicist, owned two Longines watches. He had a 1943 silver pocket watch and a 1929 gold wristwatch too. The watch which was engraved Professor Albert Einstein, Los Angeles, February 16, 1931, and sold for a record 596,000 US dollars. To fill a void, Longines launched the Prima Luna collection in 2009. The line dedicated entirely for women to satisfy a niche they felt they were neglecting. The line is a huge success mixing classic with elegance and continues to this day. Today, the Longines brand remains at the cutting edge of innovation and seeks to ensure that all its watches offer a unique combination of tradition, elegance, and performance. A luxury masterpiece in every timepiece. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, make sure to give it a like, and if you'd like to see more content from us, you can subscribe right here. And as always, if you need any help repairing your watch, the link to our website is right here. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.